This video is sponsored by DistroKid. In this video, I wanna give you insight on how I turn ideas into songs really quickly. So we're gonna jam out a bit and I'm gonna give you a breakdown of how this little song came together. I want to give a huge thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and a bunch of the other videos I've been making this year. I've been partnering with them for, oh gosh, about two years maybe now, and they've been really fantastic to work with. In case you're not familiar with DistroKid, they're a music distribution platform for digital services that you definitely use yourself, like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube Music, BearShare, LimeWire. Just kidding about those last two. That was a joke for you, uh, music pirates of the late 90s, early 1000s. Anyways, DistroKid's interface makes it so, so easy to upload music to those streaming services completely by yourself. If you've never used this service before, it's surprising how easy it is and how intuitive the interface is. You basically just create an account and go in and start entering information about whatever release you want, whether it's a single, an EP, or an album. Upload your files, drag and drop artwork. I really recommend checking out DistroKid if you have music you've been thinking about releasing and aren't sure of the avenue you want to use to release it. Once again, you can use the link in the description of this video to get 7% off of your first year of membership with DistroKid. And thanks again, DistroKid, for sponsoring this video. So I'm so stoked on this. Um, I've actually been working on it in my DAW, working on transitions, doing some overdubs with the Super 6. But this is like the raw performance version, right? And let's navigate back to our original pattern. And this is where things started. I came up with this little chord progression on the Digitone, and it's super simple. I just played it on these keys. And then the progression changes into like the. And then the next pattern switches to this thing, this progression. So that second pattern is is kind of two separate patterns that you can see I transitioned from four to five, or sorry, five to six. And that's how I built the structure with pattern seven acting as kind of the cut out everything into this little jazzy chord section. And that's what I wanna talk about in terms of building the actual song structure by bringing in old material and incorporating that. So that was the quick rundown, but let's get into the nitty gritty. How did this come to be in the first place? Well, it started with this pattern. 
and then I wanted a side chain element. So I added this track on the Digitone. And it's just a pad that I side chained by putting an LFO to the amplitude volume. You know what? It's funny because that's what I always do, but I realize that I'm actually changing the synth algorithm. And what it's doing is it's basically making it sound like it's muting parts of this synth, but it's actually just highlighting cer certain frequencies and making them disappear on the downbeat. All right, let's cut that. And let's talk about this arpeggio. It's sparkly and clear and crisp, but it's pretty wonky. So I have an LFO being sent to detune it just very slightly. And there's also something being sent to the algorithm as well. But this is the ARP by itself when you play a single note. So you'll see that it kind of doesn't really start on that bass note, on that downbeat. So how I played this when I recorded this pattern is just this. So you're kind of getting the tails of those notes on the downbeat. And it gives you like this false sense of timing when you play it by itself, especially with a kick. Listen to this. It sounds a little wacky. Put the snare in there too. Right? Kind of weird, but it's really just a supporting part. So when you add in the main synth part, it doesn't sound off. But as soon as you take it away, things get a little funky, right? So I thought that rhythmic element was really cool. So yeah, that was fun. And then I created this kick track on the Digitone that I just filled up all of the trigs and parameter locked kicks for four on the floor and then little hi-hats that I parameter locked to different pitches and samples. And this started off as just a Digitone beat. I have an Instagram post where I ran it through the Chase Bliss Gen Loss Mark II. And I did this cool like tape stop thing with it. And I really, really liked the beat. But I knew that if I wanted to flush it out into a full song, I would have to take this drum pattern and build it out on the dig attack. So I did just that. Nothing too crazy going on here, to be honest. We have some parameter locked stuff on both the kick and the snare. But a pretty full sounding drum groove, in my opinion, for four tracks. So we've got a closed rapid hat, kind of a hi-hat chick, a, a kick and a snare. And what's fun to do is to keep this track in there and layer it because it adds some extra grit to the kick and it adds some variance to the hi-hat parts as well. So if you're listening with headphones, it's probably much easier to tell when it comes in and out. But again, it's just fun to add texture that way. So I had all of these melodic elements on the Digitone. I had the drum pattern built out on the Digitact now, and I wanted to create a new pattern with the same parts, but a different progression. Lastly, I forgot that I did take a bass guitar sample from the Bath Splice Pack, and I just doubled the bass notes, the root notes of the original synth progression. And I love the sound of that organic electric bass mixed with the very lo-fi, melancholy, retro-future 
FM synth sound. I really love the quality of this synth part. And honestly, the secret is the overdrive. Even though the attack isn't at its shortest value, it still gives some nice snap to that envelope. Anyways, that's just like such a nice rich sound, even though it's very digital still. Anyway, so I had this pattern and I knew that I wanted to bring it to another place, keeping the same sounds, but just changing the progression. And I mentioned this before when I was showing you the synth parts. I just used this synth pattern and took it to kind of a darker place, knowing that I was going to resolve that by bringing it here. So instead of the, we have a, which is more so along the lines of the type of resolution you would expect, but I thought it was, again, cool to extend that second pattern. I hope you're picking up on these little hints that I'm dropping here, even though I'm not being super explicit about them, but things like changing your chord progression once you found your main sound. That main synth sound is great. It's the heart of the song. And when I just had one pattern, I knew all I had to do to get it to the next place was to just come up with a different chord progression. And before that, in the most simplest context, I knew that I had this idea of a drum pattern and I just had to flush it out on a more capable machine that was dedicated to just the drums. So use your creativity and the resources that you have. If you only have the digitone, for example, I could have built that beat out in a DAW. Or I could have created a different pattern and recorded just drums, recorded that audio to the DAW, and then layered the synth parts over it. There are really a lot of ways to approach this. I just like how fluid these two devices can be when you route MIDI to control the digitone with the digitact. Probably goes without saying that I also changed the bass line to match the digitone part in this pattern as well. And I changed the synth parts as well. Just playing different notes and chords to match with the new root progression. Simple. Again, just a matter of following the new root progression that you've developed from the initial chord changes. So that's great. The whole song could have been those three patterns kind of building up and switching back and forth, but I thought it would be nice to add some extra flair by throwing this in. This does a number of things, right? So first, it introduces a completely new chord progression. Second, it introduces a completely new texture and sort of it introduces a new player into the game that has its own home in a different sonic frequency than the other parts do. And I have this sample overdriven a little bit with a fair amount of bit reduction on it. So you got some more noise in here, which adds to the overall lo-fi vibe of this piece. But in a weird way, it like makes it jazzy, which is not really present anywhere else in this tune. So it kind of adds like a, an element of playfulness and an element of tension in a different way than you'd get just from changing chord progressions. But I do have the bass progression changing a little bit. And like, there's some dissonance there. This doesn't all sound like super, you know, resonant and together in a way, but that's kind of why I like it. But it works, right? Especially with that resol resolved nature of the main chord progression. It's busy, but by building things up one by one, you hear these elements one at a time and you're introduced how each new element interplays with the, the foundation that you're establishing as the song progresses. It's just a really cool trick to help push things along and develop them and, and build the tension. I do want to quickly explore this sample though, because this is a sample that I grabbed from the Microfreak. I 
I was borrowing the Arturia Microfreak from a friend maybe like three years ago. I had it for a month or so, and I just recorded a bunch of samples. You can see all of these MF samples. So what I did is I just chopped things up rhythmically. And the mistake that I made here is not decreasing the amplitude envelope. So the notes ring out, which is why that last note continued playing when I transitioned back to pattern four, which was our A pattern. But let me just play this for you again. And you can watch the trigs. Thanks for sticking around to the end here. I just wanted to give you a quick channel update for those that are interested. As you all may know, I moved to Maine um, just about three months ago from now, actually. And I'm living in Portland now, which is a great little city. It's very, very close to where I grew up and spent most of my childhood and younger years. And oh gosh, I have had one of the busiest summers of my life, to be honest. And you may have noticed that I'm not really posting videos consistently and regularly the way that I have since I kind of started focusing on this channel a couple of years ago. And I think that's okay, and I think it's for the best. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to be posting here and there as I have been over the summer. And I really do hope to get back into regular weekly videos in the fall. But I'm at a point in my life now where I'm back closer to my family. I'm forming new relationships. I'm rekindling old friendships. And I'm spending a lot of my time just with people, to be honest. After having lived in rural New Hampshire and Vermont for a couple of years, it's really refreshing for me. And honestly, it's what I needed. There have been a couple of times this summer where I've sat down to make videos or try to think of ideas. And it honestly just felt forced. And I told myself when I started this that I would never make videos if it just felt like I was making videos for the sake of keeping up with YouTube's algorithms, which are brutal, by the way. The channel's been suffering from me not posting weekly. And it's really frustrating, to be honest, to kind of be tied to this medium where I feel like I have to present all of my ideas in this little fancy package with a bow and a catchy, sometimes really gimmicky title and thumbnail to get people to actually click on it. Because no matter how good or bad the content is, if nobody sees it, if nobody clicks on it in the first place, it doesn't matter. But I want to remind you, and it's good to remind myself, that this channel came from me wanting to share my musical process in my own process of making music that I would be making independently of this channel or not. And the exciting thing for me that you don't see behind the scenes is that I'm still making a lot of music. I've been doing so much sound design with the Super 6. I've been working on this song, and I'm editing it and kind of recording it in a different way, relying a lot more on the DAW for audio editing and transitions than I have in the past. And it's really cool to have learned from the process of my last album and to be able to apply it to this. But I don't want to make a video about something that I don't feel like I have anything to say about. And this is the kind of stuff that I do have a lot to say about in terms of like developing structure and patterns and arrangements and overall composition. So as I work through this next batch of tunes for my next album, I'm really excited to be kind of recording these types of videos to show you what I think are these pretty useful tips and, and skills that I've developed. That said, life is great. I'm like happier than I have been in like three years probably. So I'm having a good time. I'm not going anywhere. And as always, if you ever want to just like say, hey, chat me up, um, comments are a great place to do that. That boosts engagement, which is sick. But also Instagram. Um, I always love chatting with you folks just via direct message. Um, you can go find me there. It's at slow haste. And I am still looking for students to take on. I really like teaching. So if you're interested in taking lessons, hit me up on Instagram. If you just want like a couple of sessions for some pointers, I'd be happy to do that. And if you want to sign up for long-term lessons, the best place to do that is my Patreon. And that's patreon.com slash slow haste. One of my favorite things to talk about with students is song development, helping them develop and flush out their ideas. But I also just kind of teach people how to use a lot of the electron devices like the Dig Attack, the Digitone, the Octatrack. I've done lessons on the OP1, even though I don't really play mine that much anymore. Anyways, I've rambled enough. Um, sorry I haven't been posting more, but otherwise, shit's good. Thanks for sticking around, and I hope to catch you in the next video. Peace.